Good evening, guys. Um, hope your trading day went well. Um, mine went mine went pretty well. Had a few good trades. Uh, my main one is still stagnant, and I wanted to go deeper into that uh, with ADTX. And I wanted to explain. Uh, I did a survey. Uh, it looks like a lot of you don't know what zero borrow or the fee means. And I wanted to touch up more on uh, FTDs, failure, failure to delivers, and failure, failure to delivers are uh, explicitly coordinated with uh, naked short selling, and it's something that's been going on and something that continues to increase over time. Uh, what was it? I think in the '90s it was like a couple hundred million, and in the 2000s it was in the, you know, the multiple billions, and you know. After the 2008 collapse uh, in the housing market and the stock market, it kind of lightened up a little bit. But, uh, you know, now we're going in the, the data I've seen. We've been going into the hundreds of billions of uh, dollars in failure to delivers, and it's just getting worse and worse and worse. And it, it, it's something that um, market makers and the hedge funds, you know, they they have control of and they are just abusing it immensely. And I'm going to start and I'm going to show you how they're uh, abusing it with this ticker ADTX. So let's get into it. Um, so on October 11th, this had, this had a, a short float of 156%. That's 156% of the total float. So, do the math, you know, they sh they've shorted over what what this uh, sh what the float is and 156 is a lot. And when you see 156 percent short float, that means a huge squeeze is due. And especially when you have a float of less than one million, you can you with volume, you can squeeze the fuck out of them. OK, and let's see. Um, what was I going to do next? So, yeah. Um, so looking at the weekly, you had about, now remember, this has a float of 930K minus the institutional buyers of about 500, 500,000. You know, that's like 400K in the float after institutional buyers, you know. Maybe maybe a little bit higher, uh, just a tad higher. So if you have like a, a five, like a four, five, six hundred k float after institutional buyers, I mean, you know, this should fucking move with ease, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. And the week of October third, you had about fifty million in volume. Uh, the week of October tenth. Uh, which was the time I took that snip of the 156% uh, short float. You had about 9.7 million in volume. Last week, we had about 6.1 .1 million in volume. And this week, uh, the last two days, we've had about 1.2 million in volume. And as you can see, it's gone nowhere. Why is that? Isn't that a little fishy to you? Isn't that a little fishy to you? Now let's go to the daily. If you have about four, five, six hundred k float after institutional buyers and a reported nine hundred and thirty k float, this thing should be well. This thing should well have covered. You know, had filled this gap here at ten thirty nine at the very least should have been already testing the 50 day moving average. I think it, it should have already filled the six the six dollar offering with that much volume. But and not only that, let's see. So 1021 1021 we ended in the red. We closed at we had a high of 344. We closed at three dollars even okay? And let's see here. Pardon me. And on that day, 1021, we had a short sale restriction, a SSR, and zero borrow. So a short sale restriction means that 
the previous day, it fell more than 10%, putting it in a SSR, a short sale restriction, which means there is not to be any short sales allowed for that day, okay? And then you had zero borrow. They had nothing. Zero borrow means they have no shares to short. So you have that, all right? So that was very, very fishy, all right? And it all leads to the question, what is going on? Naked short selling. That's that's the only thing you can pinpoint this to is naked short selling, okay? Now, let's see. Did I snip it? Of course not. But give me one second. Pardon the re, pardon the interruption. All right. So for all the 21st, you had zero borrow. There were no shares to short, okay? All day today, we had zero borrow, no shares to short. So this naked short selling, how do you go from 156%, how do you go from 156% to 25% without any squeeze happening? Naked short selling. and the reason, failure to delivers. What is a fail to deliver, you ask? A fail to deliver, it refers to a situation where one party is tra in a trading contract, whether it, it, it shares, futures, options, or forward contracts, doesn't deliver on their obligation, okay? And now, where was it? I posted it today. So in regular short selling, a short seller borrows a stock from the broker. The short seller immediately sells the stock on the market. Step three, the short seller buys back, buys back the stock from the market. Step four, the short seller returns the borrowed stock to the broker. Okay, and then naked short selling. In naked short selling, the seller does not borrow the stock and as a result fails to deliver the stock to the buyer for a settlement. So it's basically short selling, naked short selling is basically an IOU. They're giving shares that don't exist and then they're cycling them back to themselves just like a regular short sale, but they never, they, they fail to deliver. It typically occurs two business days after the naked short sale due to the T, the, the T plus three settlement used in the US, but there was no settlement. So two possible reasons for intentional engaging in naked short selling are to short sell stocks that dif that are difficult or impossible to borrow, which is ADTX, and to con conduct uh, manipulative bear raids on stocks, which we've seen when borrowing costs are high, market makers sometimes choose not to borrow and instead naked short sell. In such cases, naked short selling, then failing to deliver is economically in equivalent uh, to borrowing shares at the zero fee, zero rebate equity loan, plus the expected cost of being forced to buy back the stock and deliver it. The process is called buying in. in. In difficult to borrow stocks, this amount can be less than the cost of borrowing. Critics of naked short selling, myself, and many companies that claim to have been targets of manipulative selling attacks argue that naked short selling can be used to conduct bear raids because naked short sales are, uh, artificially increase the supply of shares in the market. Artificial, nothing, thin air, came out of thin air. Because naked short sellers do not borrow the stocks, they can theoretically sell unlimited volume of stock into the market, driving down share price. Traditional short sellers, on the other hand, are limited by the amount of stock they can locate to borrow, which can become 
limiting limiting as level of short interest becomes large. So this is a website that you guys all need to take down. iBorrow.com. It gives you how many shares are available for a regular short seller to short, okay? And it gives you the fee, okay? So let's go to the, the main desk. So this has a 813 P PCF, 813.7% borrowing fee with 100,000 available as of 645 Eastern time today, okay? So no regular short seller in their fucking right mind is going to touch this, okay? Now, let's go to, let's see. And also, you can look up OTC data on this. The OTC data, they have about, as of 1645 uh, Eastern time today, they had 10 million to borrow at a low fee. So market makers in the OTC are, are they're not going to shy away from shorting this one. Okay. So they have 10 million at 3.5%. Now, if you had 10 million at 3.5% fee, at, on a NASDAQ or New York's New York, NYSC, they're going to be all over this, okay? So the point is, the higher the fee with the less with the less amount the less amount of shares they have, short sellers are not going to touch it. So this is perfect conditions for a squeeze and perfect conditions to to scare off short sellers and to trade without fear of it being shorted, okay? And then you have this one, 500% with 20,000. That's perfect. So the higher the fee, the lower the availability, the less likely short sellers are going to short. And you can look up mainly, I think it's any pink. It's either pink. Yeah, it's pink OTCB and OTCQX. You can look those up and look at the fee and how much they have to borrow. And remember, the higher the fee, the less availability, the less likely they are to short, okay? The lower the fee, the higher the availability, the more likely they are to, sh to short it, okay? Hope that makes sense. Now, fail failure to delivers, which is intertwined with naked short selling. You ask yourself, okay, if if, if we have a high, high fee and an availability, uh, a low availability, and they're short, and they're still sh naked short selling. Then what the fuck, Daniel? How well, what, what the fuck's the point of this? Well, what you can do is is you can take this website down too. You can look at the history of failure to delivers. Okay, all right. You can look at the history of failures to deliver. So you can see in ADTX, it's pro it's prominent. There's a history of a lot of failure to delivers. So, which means is they basically use this stock as their bitch. All right. Now, I had the I had the idea that it was a low float. It was you know it had a high short interest, a low out low shares outstanding. But even that, because they shorted it so much and they abused it so much, they they've been naked shorting the fuck out of it to drive this short. In short float interest down so that they don't have to so that they don't get caught in the squeeze which should have happened a long time ago had they played by the rules so yeah so just to recap um for avoiding shorts avo avoiding short selling and possibly catching a squeeze you want to find a high fee and then you want to find low availability so they're less likely to short the ticker with a high fee and a low availability verse and vice versa. Okay. And now fail to delivers, take this website down. You want to look at the history of failures, failures to deliver, which looked like they weren't, they weren't shorting it. So they weren't shorting it. Well, they weren't naked shorting it for a while. Okay. And then pattern here, you got some failure to delivers from August to October. You got a big one in mid-October and a lot in October of last year. Uh, you got a lot in December of last year. 
You got a lot in the January, February, and then you have a huge spike in looks like uh, possibly June, and then you've been having a lot of failure to deliver. So they've been naked short selling this one for a long time. It's data that I did not remotely look at, and it's something that you should be wary of, okay? Now, you always, like I said before, in order to avoid naked short sales, you want to look at the failures to deliver data, all right? And you can see there's uh, a pattern, see, higher, higher, higher. It's getting higher as it goes along. If you saw this trend line, it's getting higher, and they will continue, like, it's like they have their fucking claws in this now, and they will continue to do it. So always look out for failure to delivers, okay, guys? And I hope that I hope that this video made sense of what I'm talking about. And I hope that this um, helped you understand a little bit more about uh, uh, zero borrow, uh, high, high fees, availabilities, FTDs, things like that. So you always want to incorporate this into, into your risk mitigation, your risk management before you enter a ticker, okay? I cannot stress this enough. Because those fuckers out there, you know, they have these fuckers, you know, large firms and hedge funds, put, you know, put out, put on short positions, you know, and, you know, fuck. Hedge funds, hang on, I got to get my wording right. Hedge funds and large firms have dedicated staff of programmers at their disposal to make sense of huge, and I mean huge, volume of data on Wall Street, Okay. And this data is they generate it every day. It is it is literally like finding a needle in a haystack to identify a move that is about to happen for us. For them, they have all this data and they this is the same data they I'm looking at is the data they look at to determine what they're gonna target, what they're gonna hit, what they're gonna short, you know? So a lot of information to look at, guys. I and just Rewatch this video as many times as you can to get it in your head to look at this stuff, okay? Now, ADTX, I'm a little worried about it because they got their claws in it right now. Because this, for a 90, for 930K float minus the institutional buyers with this much volume, this should have been fucking long gone in a perfect world, but it's not. So we, you have to mitigate your risk. Look at these at these FTDs. Look at this data and make you see that there's a history about history to it. Yeah, it looks attractive, but fuck, you're gonna get fucking you know these fucking naked short selling hedge fund fucks are gonna fucking swamp you with these artificial shares to drive down the price. Uh, there was one company, I believe, back in the late 2000, early 2010s, where they were working on a cancer drug and this guy had cancer. He was the trial patient and it was showing signs of improving his cancer. And these, these naked short fucks, they, they naked shorted the company so much that they drove the company into bankruptcy and the drug that they were working on was close to F was close to being sent to the FDA for approval, but because they they bankrupted the company by naked short selling, this fucking drug net never made it to the FDA. And this guy who was on who was uh, he was a test subject, uh, I believe he was a test subject on it, and it's it, it was showing signs of improvement, but they just needed FDA approval. And it never made it there because they lost the funding because uh, because of the capital uh, being driven down uh, due to naked short selling. And the guy died and the company got shut down. This drug was never brought to the market. So just goes to show you how fucked this shit is and how fucking corrupt our markets are. And the SEC continues to turn their fucking head the other way because the fucking these SEC fucks. They're in the pockets of these fucking hedge funds that get away with fucking murder. So, yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. It was kind of educational, kind of rant. Uh, sorry, not sorry if it uh, went a little bit longer than I wanted to. But, 
you know, this is really important information. You really, you guys really have to, you know, think about this shit. You really have to look at this data because, you know, I'm an analyst at heart, but I had to learn how to trade, you know, as my, as you know, the years went on and, you know, I have, I had to learn how to look at this data, you know, cause I was all pure charting and I'm learning this shit as I go, you know, and I, and I think you should too. So yeah, guys, you know, for more content like this, if you want to help a brother out, HBO special, please give me a, a like, share, subscribe this channel, and uh, I will talk to you.